I've been developing a lot of consumer projects, whether they are apps or web apps, it doesn't really matter, over these past 10 years. And with that, I've learned a lot of what a project needs in order to succeed, uh, both from the developer perspective, the designer perspective, and the client perspective. But also, I've learned in various painful ways what the project needs in order to completely fail. So last year, I started taking a, a professional certification for uh, GCP. And with that, I went through uh, a course, uh, but it was getting to a point where I had to take the exam. The issue was that I didn't really see any app that would allow me to study for, for the project because I, I really prefer to be really practical about the way that I study. So I usually tend to learn um, better if I'm just answering the same questions over and over again and eventually they click in and I know exactly what I should answer for that question. So after the course was done, I started to look for an app that will, would allow me to, to do exactly that. And even though there are a bunch like Quizlet out there, they didn't really do exactly what I wanted to. And, and so I set out to do an app that would do everything that I wanted to. Uh, I know that this is relatable to, to some extent to, to most of you. And so uh, last year, uh, it was the end of the summer and I went to, to a bar next to my house and I started to just develop uh, on this, uh, this idea that I had, like I knew exactly what I wanted in my head, but now it was time to, to put it into practice. And so that same day I went down and I started to write some code without thinking a lot about it. And that will be one of the first mistakes that I had committed even before I started writing some code for the project. And that was a problem because I, didn't really write any user stories. I didn't write or try to sketch out everything that I wanted the app to do. I had an idea, a great idea in my head, but that was one of the, the first mistakes because even though user stories are really boring to set up and to write and to make sure that we think about everything that the app will have uh, earlier on, it is really, really important to think about them. Uh, now, during college, I honestly thought they were useless. Um, eventually getting into consumer projects, we all realize that they aren't. Foresight projects, they are especially important because you will have a bunch of ideas while you are developing. Now, odds are some of those ideas are really valid and you should strive to implement them. But more than likely, a lot of those ideas won't help you fit a rich, but yet mark market product fit. And by market product fit, I mean the app that will actually, or the project that will actually catch on to the end consumer. So uh, but if I had written down all of the user stories earlier on, like, I want the user to do this because of that. I want the user to do this because of that. That would have helped me uh, figure out as I went if another idea that I had would be important for the project or not. And it would force me to take a step back, think about that new idea, and not just jump into the code right away. Because I spent around two or three months implementing ideas that I eventually just scraped because they were not good at all. Uh, and then, I mean, it took me a while to figure that out. I wrote a bunch of code that wasn't needed. And so if I had a set of user stories that I wanted to run by, it would have helped me to at least slow down and think if that was important or not, looking at the whole picture of the project. This has a name, it is called feature creep. Uh, and basically it is quite easy to get into a point where you start, you are working on your main project, then you have an idea, you scrap everything that you were doing or you stop it, then you start implementing that new idea. After a month or so, you have another idea and you just repeat the cycle. It is not healthy. It will help your product to reach nowhere. So pay really close attention to the initial scope of the project. Be really mindful of what's really, really important and only work on that. I can guarantee you after releasing the project, you will have a bunch of time to work on all of the side hustles or side ideas that you had while you were developing the project. The second mistake that I made that same fateful day was not designing anything for the project. So I basically just designed as I 
coded, which is really fun to do. Uh, but the problem with that is that as the project gets more and more complex, you start adding more and more components. And I mean, we are developers, we are not designers. We have basically no idea of how a design system should work. And you will end up with a project that's not cohesive at all. You'll end up with a project that has a bunch of different variants of components that don't make sense when put together. And you'll end up with a UX that's not particularly user friendly. You'll end up with a project that's really hard to use. And it is really hard to understand that the project is uh, not that easy to use. If you are looking at the same project day after day after day after day, remember you are not the end user. And because of that, you don't have that user feeling of going into an app and trying to figure out if I click this button, I should go to that screen and I should do this form because uh, implementing this form will allow me to reach this part of the app. New users don't have any idea of that. And so if it, that, at that time I had just uh, used Figma, Xcolidraw, or even just a piece of paper, and I sketched out uh, all of the screens that I wanted the app to have, it would be really, really that much easier to figure out earlier on the errors that I would eventually make with code. Remember, making errors on a piece of paper is much less expensive than making errors while writing code, because writing code takes a lot, a lot of time. And so, I'm not expecting you to be a, a designer. We are not designers by trade and we are not good designers. Now, some of you um, might have this good quality of looking into an app and figuring out if it is good or bad. That's different from designing an app. So me personally, I honestly believe that I can look into an app or a website wherever and figure out if the design is good or not. But that's really, really that much different from actually designing something from scratch. So be really mindful of that. Try to sketch out the app earlier on. Again, it doesn't need to be Figma. It doesn't need to be Excalidraw, even though I prefer those tools. If you don't feel comfortable with those, just uh, design them on a piece of paper and try to figure out what's the best flow for the user in order to sign up, then to go into the app and actually use your app as they should. Um, that will help you to catch on to errors earlier on. Now, the second mistake that I made related to design was that even though I was using um, a component library, uh, at that time I picked Tamagui because it is really, really good for React Native. Uh, uh, but the issue there was that I started to really heavily design the components and alter the components and making specific alterations to the components, even though I really didn't have an idea of how I wanted the app to look. Uh, this was fine at the beginning because I only had like two variants of the same button. I only have one input text, one input box. I only had like a couple of components that I was in at the time. But as the app grow more and more complex, I started to make more and more variants of components. At the end, the app looked awful. And the first iteration of the app looked absolutely terrible to a point where I had to redesign everything. And later on, I did it again because I fell into the same issue of overly designing uh, the components. And again, because I really don't have any experience designing apps, it ended up looking really, really terrible. And the, the, the feel of the app was not good. And so I redesigned the app three times because I decided to just try to make something super specific earlier on and try to design to as much as I could every single component. So in the end, in the third iteration of the, the app, I decided to use Tamagui as plainly as possible with the default components that they provided without overly designing the components because odds are the component library that you are using is far better when it comes to design than anything that you could um, design in your lifetime, just as it is for me. So try to not over design it, try to sketch out the UX of the app earlier on, and you should at least have an app that looks kind of good and that the user experience doesn't completely suck.
One other point is that if you are developing a side project, odds are you don't have a lot of money to put, go, put into research, user research, uh, to try to make sure that you are building the best app that your users actually want. So in order to combat this, please don't forget to use an analytics tool for your app, whether it is Mixpanel, Firebase Analytics, Segment, whatever, there are a bunch out there. Just make sure that you use it and that you track the user's flow within your app. So record all of the screens that users see and, and in which order they see them. Make sure you track any button click, uh, you track any action that the user does. This will help you after the release to understand how the user behaves within your app and more importantly, what the user actually is using. Because if you have a bunch of features, you might have a couple of features that are completely relevant for your for your users. And if you don't have an analytics tool working against your app, you will not understand what the user needs or what the user wants. So make sure you do this earlier on before the first version of your app is released. It will help you a bunch. It is really, really inexpensive if it even costs you anything because most of these products have a free tier that is more than good enough uh, while your app is still uh, being pushed out and you don't have a lot of users. So make sure you do this. This will help you to improve your app later on. But you have to make sure that it is implemented before the first version of your app is released. On Studify, I decided that I wanted to play around with some different um, tools, packages, databases, whatever. In my case, I really wanted to play around with Expo Router, with uh, Superbase, and Tamagui, because those three I had used in the past, but not with that because those three I had already used in the past, but not in the projects um, per se. I only used them separately to try to figure out how they worked. Um, and so I really wanted to try them in this project, amongst others, but those three were the primary ones. Now, this is a mistake uh, from the point of view uh, of a project that I actually want to release to an end uh, user. If it was just something that I wanted to play around with, it would be fine to try 10, 20 different things at once. That's fine. But if you actually want to release a project to your um, to your users or your potential users, let me put it that way, then it is better to pick one, two, maybe three things that you want to, to try uh, in your new project and leave the rest out with just things that you are familiar with and you are really knowledgeable, but really knowledgeable about. This is because if you try a bunch of things at once, odds are you'll end up wasting a bunch of time, not wasting, but spending a lot of time just reading through documentation, figuring out how stuff works, um, and this will delay your process. Now, again, it is really important to learn new things. Side projects are really the place where you should use new things um, in order to learn and to make sure that you are not wasting your time because if the project doesn't succeed, at least you'll learn something out of it. But try to take it slow if it is something that you really, really want to release. The final and biggest mistake that I made was that two months out from starting the project, I had already an MVP that worked. Was it good? No. Was it pretty? No. Did it have bugs? It had a bunch, but I didn't release it because I wasn't happy with the state of it. Now, this perfectionist mind around uh, projects, it's good and all to some extent, but you should always err on the side of releasing a project, even if it is not perfect, uh, over not releasing it at all. Um, this is true because if you get into the mind of it can always be better, you will end up never releasing the product. And the sooner you release the product, the sooner you will gain knowledge into what your users need, into, into what problems your app has. Because if you are working on a side project, again, you won't have that many resources to test the app fully before releasing. You won't be able to release a better uh, instance of your app and actually have enough users in order to gain knowledge on what you've done. And so the sooner you release the app, the better. You will have problems with the app. And now I'm saying this from a perspective on, of an app that uh, isn't that risky 
And by that, I'm saying like, if you are releasing something related to health, if you are releasing something related to banking, then take your time because then you can be liable for a lot of things. But if you are doing something like Studify, where if something breaks, there's not that big of a deal, then err on the side of releasing it. Release it, gain knowledge on what users want, and then iterate upon it until you have the app that the users want. This will make sure that, first of all, after you release a project, you are basically on the hook for it. And so the motivation to work on it is much, much bigger. And on the other hand, you'll make sure that you develop something that your users actually want. That's really, really, really powerful. So basically, you should fail fast, but learn faster. That's a quote that I want you to live by. And that's something that we should always use and strive for, whether we are working on a side project or on a client's project. That's really, really important. So that's it. If you are able to avoid these mistakes that a lot of developers, including myself, fall into time and time again, uh, then you will be on your way to actually releasing your projects and you'll be sure that the projects have the greatest chance for success possible. Now, it doesn't mean that you won't eventually fall into those. Um, you will, uh, be just like I did for Studify. But at least in the end, you'll develop more side projects or more projects. You'll be able to learn a lot more from them. And eventually, you will get to that point where you have a side project that actually makes it out and um, actually is successful because that's uh, what we all want. Um, but yeah, even if they don't succeed, just remember that learning something new from a project is uh, obviously important. It will help you to grow as a developer and to actually make sure that the next time you try something, it is able to succeed. So that's it. If you want to try Studify, please do go into the links down below. It should be available on all app stores. Um, and yeah, if you have any other uh, thing that you believe that developers should avoid or should be better at managing when it comes to side projects or main projects doesn't really matter, please do leave a comment down below with, uh, with them. I'll be happy to uh, read through all of the comments that you guys leave. Down. And yeah, if you want the um, readable version of this video, I uh, will leave a link down below for a dev.2 and the Medium uh, article with all of the thoughts that I have around this um, to some extent on it or, or another. It might be slightly different, but yeah. Well, thank you guys so much for watching and I hope to see you again tomorrow. Bye.